Hello and welcome to Exotic Gardening UK, Yorkshire Chris Weekly. And on this week's episode, we're looking at those plants that look at their absolute worst after winter and comparing them to some plants that look surprisingly happy. So I'm making this video to show you what plants can look like after a normal or bad winter. We've been blessed with a run of really nice mild winters for the last five, six, seven years. Yes, we had the beast fleece in 2018, but it wasn't that long lived compared to this winter, which has been basically just cold for months on end. Lots of frost, we've had lots of snow, and although we've not had the severe temperatures that we could have in some places or in previous years, we've still had minus six, minus seven, and we've had lots and lots of minus threes, minus fours, and this has caused a lot of damage to a lot of plants in the garden. Nothing hopefully terminal, but still a lot of things looking pretty sorry for themselves, looking very ugly basically, and it'll take a long time to look good again. So I'm making this video a bit of a cautionary tale. If you're thinking about planting half hardy plants or plants that are slightly tender, it'd be good to obviously see how those plants that you might think about buying have gone through my winter here and seen what they look like. And I'm gonna show you some plants that have actually coped really well with the cold conditions and actually look pretty good considering the temperatures we've had. So on with the video. Here we have my mule palm and it's a sad sight to see with its crispy dried out leaves and the mule palm is a cross between a Sagras and a Bootia and in this case it's one of the sort of less hardy Sagrases that were used in the cross and probably the Bootia was odorata but I'm not certain on that and as you can see it looks absolutely terrible. And the reason it looks so bad is because we had a normal winter. What I, mean, what I mean by a normal winter is one where we get some snow, lots of frosts and temperatures down to minus five and lower. And we haven't had normal winters really here for about six, seven, eight years. So we've not had those really cold temperatures. So plants like this have done okay in previous years. But now this year it's obviously had too much cold damage on it and these outer leaves are completely dead but if I look in the center there is some life and it's nice and green in there so it'll probably be okay if I just tug on the spear it's not coming out so it doesn't look like it's rotted so I'm going to dig this up and I'm going to replace it with a much tougher palm looks very similar and that will be another type of sort of mule palm or similar, i.e. a cross between two species. And that will be a bootia as well, with a special cross, which will be hopefully much hardier than the cross that made this palm. So that will be done in the next year or two. And this summer we'll probably have some more dramatic bedding plants in this area. So this plant itself, although I'll dig it up, I'll pot it up, I won't throw it away, I'll nurse it back to some health and then probably sell it on to somewhere to somebody who lives in a much milder location in the UK. Here is another absolutely wonderful feather palm looking really sorry for itself and this is Bootia cateriensis and this has been planted out for about three or four years and it's been fine in previous mild winters but this winter has seen it suffer quite a lot and this has been exacerbated by the fact that it's grown in this bed where there's lots of annual plants with big foliage that do feed a lot and that feed obviously has fed the palm as well which has been great for growth but what it's meant is it's had extra fertilizer later in the year when really it should be holding back on fertilizer so you shouldn't be fertilizing palms like this after August because the new growth will be really basically soft and not get through a hard winter. So you want to lay off the fertilizer. Here, 
because all the plants around it have been fed well into October, this has suffered. So first of all, I noticed earlier in spring that the centre, the newest leaf that formed last year died. And that is because it wasn't hardened off because of the feed last autumn. But then as spring's gone on, even the older leaves have looked worse and worse and they've gone sort of like a, a red colour. So the damage was done over winter and then the continued frosts throughout spring has just exacerbated it. So we've got really a lot of damage and we've still got some green parts of the leaves but frankly this is looking really bad. And I have some other booties in the garden that are thankfully completely unfazed, completely untouched by the cold we've had. So Odorata and Eriospatha are looking beautiful, nice and green leaves with no damage. Whereas, Eriospa uh, whereas Cateriensis is obviously less hardy, as this is proven by my experience here. I have another specimen further, by, further down the garden by the pond that has got less damage because it wasn't fed like this one was last year. So it was basically a bit more tolerant of the colder conditions. But yet again, that's still got some damage. So be careful about feeding palms later in the year. And also be careful about picking varieties that might not make it in cold winters. This I'm sure will come back, but it's going to look awful for two or three years before that happens. Here's another plant not looking very happy at all. And this is a survivor of winter 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, when we had very cold winters and we had minus 10 in 2010. And it survived only just, and it's been growing really well for the last seven, eight years. And it's been green, it's been untouched by any cold whatsoever, but we've not had real cold until this winter and it's gone blonde it's gone crispy straw colored and all these outer leaves are completely dead but the only saving grace really is if we look in the center if i just move away carefully because it hurts this one because the thorns we've got a lovely green center so this plant's not dead it's not rotten away and if i pull here you can just test it pull in there it's nice and strong so it's not got central rot this will look rubbish probably for most of this year but by the end of the year it'll be looking good again I'll remove all these dead leaves to allow the center nice leaves to emerge and make this wonderful rosette shape and this is a bit of a surprise like I said because it's been very happy in this spot, not shown any shown any damage whatsoever for the last few years since 2010 was the last time it showed any damage. And other Dizilarions are completely untouched by the weather. So this is Ceratifolium. I've also got a Glaucophyllum or could be Wheelii, that's completely fine. And I've also got another smaller Ceratifolium which I'll just show you by the pond which has not been damaged. But these are my very sad looking Alastriatulas, which I always say are hardy, and they are hardy. Hardy down to at least minus 10, possibly minus 15 from the ground, but over ground, minus 7, minus 8, to see them, well, end up looking like this if you get a lot of temperatures like that, or many, many frosts for a long, long time. So all this top growth is completely fried and frazzled, so this won't come back from this point. Further down the stem, we might get side shoots growing and definitely from below ground, from the roots, because of very sort of fleshy, vigorous roots, we'll get plenty of new growth later in the year. Not all of them look as bad as this. We do have some with some green on here. We have some just out of shot that are fully green, that are protected by a palm leaf. And we have one behind me that's quite a lot of green. And we have a big jabea bed, which is just behind the camera. There's the, my oldest established clump and that is looking pretty good and there's lots and lots of nice green leaves. So it's acted herbaceous this winter because of the cold temperatures but it will come back from the ground. And finally here's another plant looking again sorry for itself and this is a cordyline but it's one of the tender ones. This is Torbay Dazzler 
with the three types of variegation, the cream, the pinkish color and the green. And it's not dead. The center looks okay. If I pull on that. But it looks scrappy, it looks tatty because it's suffered over this winter. It's been pushed to its limit. Like I said, we've had minus seven. And this can cut down to minus five without being damaged too much. But lower than that, it's, it's you know, it's debatable whether or not it'll suffer damage. And in this case, it has. It's not terminal, but it's not looking great. But the good thing about cord lines is they grow quickly. So this damage should hopefully quickly be forgotten as the new foliage comes out the center and we can tidy up this later in the year. Right, that's enough of looking at really sad or dead looking plants. I want to show you a few plants now that have surprised me by looking so good after un, you know, going through the same sort of conditions that these plants have gone through. Here we have one of the best Sheffalas you can grow. This is Sheffala macrophylla. Macrophylla I mean big leafed and it has got huge leaves and this is thought to be one of the tender ones that even struggles in places like Cornwall but in cold winters but here again minus seven one of the worst winters we've had in a long time coldest January five six snowfall events frosts every single day apart from two in April just been basically cold winter but yet Although it's looking a bit tired now, it's still alive, it's still green. The center, I've got new leaves trying to emerge. Obviously, the frost has blackened off the outer one somewhat, but there's new growth ready to come out. This is well and truly alive. It's kept its leaves throughout winter. Absolutely stunning plants. And I'm so glad I've got this specimen and hopefully it will continue for many more years. There's no damage at all on this briar amata with its wonderful steely blue leaves. Yucca vaxonia, again looking nice and healthy, nice and green with no spotting or dieback whatsoever. Yucca linearis or lineifolia, again steely blue leaves on this one, very fine and spiky, absolutely pristine after the weather we've had this winter. Agave Montana, pretty much bulletproof, completely pristine after the winter we've had. Very happy with this, it's had a rain cover over it, but even still, it's looking absolutely amazing. Here's one that might surprise a few people. This is Cycas Revoluta, which is still green, and it's been in the ground for about five years now. And it's not been damaged by the cold whatsoever. It's had fleece around it on the coldest nights. And the yellow when you see to the leaves is because the leaves are very old. I think it's not had new leaves for two or three seasons now. So it's well overdue a flush of new foliage this year. And I will promote that by cutting all these leaves off in June as well to promote an extra flush of leaves. So that has survived the cold temperatures where other plants have looked absolutely awful. And finally, after seeing all that death and destruction of all the plants so far in this week's episode, I thought I'd end on one of the, probably the biggest surprises and a plant that many, many people grow. And that is a Canary Island Date Palm or Phoenix Canariensis. Often thought to be very tender or at least tender and not get through you know cold winters at all without damage has, well, basically book the trend in my garden. This specimen you can see here has been in the ground for about four or five years now and it's still completely green. There's not a smidge of damage on the leaves at all. And this saw minus six, minus seven completely unprotected this year. I only protected it for about four or five days when I expected it down to about minus 10, which never actually occurred. But as you can see, it's looking really, really healthy. Thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Gardening UK. Join me next week where we'll be doing more in the garden.